Welcome back to another P5JS video. This is Sensei Charles, and in this one we're going to be going over the Space Invaders game. So as you may already know, in Space Invaders you play by, by uh, defending your base from a bunch of alien invaders. Or really whatever you want to regard them as. So our first step would be just going over and starting a new project. So make sure you can get that up, and once you do, you can come back to this video. For the next step, I actually want our game to be a little bit larger than this uh, 400 by 400 uh, pixel arrangement. So I'm going to go change the canvas to 800 pixels by 800. That should be considerably larger and give us a lot more room to work with. For the next part, we can go over into the draw function. I know we haven't used this yet before, but it's actually quite simple. So the draw function works by calling itself over and over again every single frame. So that means we can put something in here and it'll always update. For that reason, we're going to be using that for our player and our enemies, as well as like our, uh, our, our UI so you can see our score and lives and stuff, because you always want that to be updated. First thing I'm going to do is change our background color. I'm going to make it uh, black by putting a zero in here. And the next thing I'm going to do is, well, we want to create our HUD. Or, or UI, so we can show our score and lives at the top of the screen. So we're going to need to uh, place that in here. We could just write it right underneath here, but in order to stay a little bit organized, what we're going to do is create our own function. All we have to do is go underneath our current code, type in the word function, and then the name of it. So since we're going to be drawing the UI, I'm going to call this a draw UI. Like so. We put uh, two parentheses and then the curly brackets. And they're all good. You can always come back up here, put draw HUD in. This will make sure that it calls. If you don't have it, um, it won't actually work because the draw function won't know that this guy exists. And then before we actually start with uh, with like putting the text on the screen for our UI, we have to know where we're getting the information for that from. And to do that, we're going we're going to be storing two variables one for the lives and one for the score. Um, you can really put this anywhere as long as it's outside of any function. So I'm just going to put it at the top, make a variable called score that equals zero and a variable called lives. And for a player, I'm just going to put three in. Really, you can put whatever you want. Okay, now we can get started. The first thing I'm going to do here is set the uh, text color to white by putting a uh, fill 255, 255, 255. And then I'm going to set the outline color by using stroke. I'm going to make this green, like so. And then next, I'm going to go set the, uh, the thickness of the outline to 8. I'll make it a little bit thicker. And I'm going to make this text a little big. Uh, realistically, you can also just use whatever numbers you want here. I'm using these because I think they'll look nice, but we'll see that in a second. And the way I want to have this UI set up is I want the uh, score to be on the left side of the screen here, and the lives to be on the right side. So what I'm going to do is for this first one, which is going to be our score, I'm going to do text align left in all caps, and that'll just make sure the text is centered to the left. It'll make my job of positioning this guy in the screen much easier. And then I'm going to go put in score. Do a text score. Since score doesn't change, we can just write that in. But the thing that does change is our actual score. So if we end the parentheses, or end, end the uh, quotations, I mean, then put a plus sign, we can do plus score. That'll get that variable. And then we can put where we want it on the screen. Uh, I think 2045 should work does. Oh, I accidentally wrote stroke and then stroke weight. There you go. Now you have white text with the green outline, score is zero. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the lives, except I want this on the right side of the screen. So I'm going to do text align right, and then text, lives just as before, plus lives, and 7a, and I want this to be on the same y position or y uh, coordinate so i'm going to keep the 45 drag it down just like that 
we now have a score and a lives on the screen. The next thing we're going to do is make our player. Our player, in, as in a regular, a regular game of Space Invaders, is going to be situated at the bottom of our screen, and out here, and we'll be able to move left and right. In this video, we're only going to be go going over creating the player. We'll go over the input in the next one. So just as with our UI, the first thing we want to do is create a function called draw player. The name doesn't matter, but it's a good idea to keep this name as something that describes what it does, so you'll know what it do does if you look at it later in time. So if I were to name this just like a bunch of random words, then I would probably look at this later and have no idea what I'm looking at. So just by putting this in, I'll have an idea like, oh, this guy draws the player. And then of course we want to put this on the screen. We want our UI to be drawn after the uh, player because otherwise, if for whatever reason, if our player was up at the top of the screen, it would be over top of the text, which we don't want. We want the text to always be in the front. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the fill color. I also want this to be a green color, maybe a little bit brighter. So I'm going to do 255 for the green value here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'll, I don't really want an outline, so I'm going to do no stroke. So before we can create the player, we need to know the x and y position of the player on the screen. Other than Otherwise, we'd have no idea what we're drawing. Technically, we could just use random numbers here, just like we do when we're creating uh, the text on the screen, just where we want them. But our player needs to be able to move, so we have to be able to store this value for later. To do this, we're going to be learning something new. In uh, JavaScript, you can, create what, you can create objects using variables. And they work like this. So if we are doing var player at the top, do equal sign and then do curly brackets, we can specify a series of values we want to keep stored. So for our player, we would want to keep stored our x position. So in our, and it's going to be x and then a colon, like so, and then the value. For this one, I'm going to use a value of 400. Sorry about that. There's a bit of an interruption. Anyways, we were making the player. So we want our x coordinate to be at x400, and then our y can be probably want it at the bottom of the screen, so it's going to be a pretty high number overall. And since the bottom, and it's a high number since the top is going to be zero, and our bottom is going to be 800, and that's defined when we made the trade canvas on the screen. So I want to put it pretty low at 700 value. You don't want it too high because if it is, then our spaceship will be too high for the. Uh, enemies, which is going to be at the top of the screen. And with that done, that means we can finish our draw player script, right? And so far, this isn't going to control our motion or anything. This is just going to show the uh, player on the screen. In the next video, we're going to be showing you, or I will be showing you how to uh, make the player move. So just uh, simple steps at first. And one thing I'm going to do is just tidy code quick. That's going to Make sure everything's indented properly. So we have a fill color, right? And we have our, and we get rid of our outline. So next thing we want to do is make our rec mode center. So just how we used it before, for uh, or not, we haven't really used this before, but like how text line takes it from uh, right or left. Rec mode works in a, a very similar way. We're going to be making a rectangle, and rec mode. Uh, checks where we want our position to account from. So def by default, whatever position we put in, so if that, let's say it was zero, zero, so the top left of the screen, that would be counted as the top left corner. And we go from there. So on corner mode at the top left corner, you would have a, a rectangle that goes from here to wherever you want to go, and it would show the whole rectangle. With it set to center, the, the uh, point that the rect command uses is the center of the rectangle. So while the rec, so while the uh, corner goes from like here to here, the uh, the with it sent to center, it would only go a little bit, and that's because the center of the rectangle is here. I can actually show you that once we put this in. So we, our first one, we want it to be on the player X, on player Y, fifty fifty, right? Player dot Y. Right, and we have a rectangle. And just for the sake of showing the difference between center and corner modes, 
I'm just going to put a 0 comma 0 that's going to put at the top left. And you see how it like starts up here and looks a little bit smaller than it did down here. If we then change this to corner, see, we have the entire rectangle. So it's just choosing where our position counts from. But since we're checking the position, it makes more sense for us to check from the center. If we're just positioning something on the screen, then uh, you might want to use corner, depending on what you're doing. Oops. And since the uh, player here is supposed to have like a gun on it, so it can shoot, we're going to add a little bit more, like a little extra rectangle above it. So, and we're doing minus so it goes up, and we'll do 15, 30, and I think I messed this part up. I want this longer. That looks okay, I guess. So this will be our little turret on the ground to uh, defend ourselves from the uh, space invaders. So more or less, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time when we're going to be going over how to make the player move across the screen.